Hello and welcome to MIP TV. And with me as ever is the wonderful Bob Cook from the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. And Bob's going to be sharing again his favourite book. I think this is review six, eight. isn't it? Eight. Oh, eight. 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 I, yeah. need, I need to keep up, Bob. Review eight. And you're looking today at um, a really important book, certainly in the world of TA and in counselling in general. Yeah. So introduce us to this seminal text, Bob. Okay, this book is about contracts, and as we know, contractual theory is central to transactional analysis. Eric Byrne was a real devoutee of contracts in TA, um, and of course, counselling and psychotherapy. So this book is called Contracts in Counselling by Charlotte Sills. Okay, now, it, with the advent of the new BACP ethical framework that came out on the 1st of July, in 2016 one of the ethical demands really is that we keep relevant records and some mm. therapists see that as <coughs> contracting and there's different forms of contracts so it might be useful bob if you take us through you know there's like a business contract and then there's a therapy contract just take us through the different forms of contracting i think that might be useful to know okay business contract things that would go in there would be things like um, how much the uh, counselling or psychotherapy costs per hour, where it will be, um, uh, confidentiality, um, things like uh, boundaries, so you wouldn't turn up drunk, wouldn't work with people who are, addic you know, are smoking or, I mean, addictions, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that sort of thing. So the sort of uh, general business contract you would have anyway. So that's, that's the outline for the therapy and the counselling in terms of business. But then you have treatment contracts. So what do you want to achieve from uh, therapy? Got an overall contract there. So the person might say, I'd like to um, be more relaxed and less depressed. Then you'd ask them what stops the person achieving that. And then what they need to um, get better in that sense. And how you can support them. So you've got a contract just in that sense. That's an overall contract. And they have sessional contracts, so you might give homework per session, what comes up in the session. So you've got different types, overall contracts, sessional contracts, business contracts, and treatment contracts. So in terms of this book, Bob, why, <coughs> why is it such an interesting book to you? What is it that you think is useful for other people to gain from it? And, and why do you find it an interesting book? Well, of course, it's uh, written by... Uh, I mean, it's edited by Charles Sills, but many of the actual chapters are by some of the foremost people in transaction analysis. Yeah, so it's not just Charles Sills itself, but each chapter is looking at, you know, what they believe is important in contracts. So I talked about some of those areas of contracts. One I've missed out would be process contracts, uh, what comes up in the process. So I like the idea of um, the different variation of chapters by well-known people looking at contracts from different angles um, but of course contracts has always been uh, central to my heart because uh, it's the focus of the therapy i think unless you've got a focus you can um, meander you can get lost in the process you can even be manipulated in the process but you've got a contract you can keep coming back to that like a rudder you know like a uh, you, you can go back to it so the ship goes the right way instead of meandering off and you both get lost. So I like the idea of focus and a contract to come back to. So that's exciting in itself. And of course, many people would be, uh, practitioners would be um, against the idea of contracts. So Gestalt therapists, for example, would see contracts as an anatomy because they would say that a person might go underground and adapt to you and not really look at what it's all about. So that's tackled in this book as well. The advantages of contracts, but also the disadvantages of contracts. Yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because in the person-centered world, a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, make a business contract. They may even make an initial therapeutic contract. You know, what is mm. it you hope to, hope to change or want to look at? Mm. Um, but it, it's noticeable, and certainly through my experience, talking to people like yourself and Gestalt therapists, that, that there are different different methods in psychotherapy rely 
to, to a greater or lesser extent on contracts. And in fact, in the world of TA, there is the contractual school, isn't there, if I'm not mistaken? Now, you've got the Cathexis school, but you, where you are right, there's Eric Byrne, uh, uh, the creator of Transactionize, has created the classical school, sometimes yeah. called the Byrnian school, actually saw contracts as pivotal to change. So, you know, absolutely pivotal that the person would take ownership of what they want to change, and more than that, take ownership if possible, and how they may sabotage the focus and the contract. And for him, cont the achievement was the contract. You know, as you um, actually um, complete the contract, that was cure. Yeah. So according to Byrne, once, once the contract had come to an end and it was successfully completed. That was that, it. That was it. Or you move on to a different contract to look Correct. at something. Correct. Yeah. So it gave a beginning, middle and end to the therapeutic process. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is interesting. So what do you think students may get from reading a book on different forms of contracts? What do you think they may take away from it? You know, that... Uh, the, for, especially for beginning therapists, I think, beginning counsellors, it gives them a structure to hold on to. It gives them a form to the actual 50-minute hour in terms of what a person will achieve from that or what they're going to be looking at that. And that is in itself is a structure. But more than that, it gives an overall structure. It gives a... Um, a sense of meaning to the psychotherapy sequences. In, se in other words, a sense of direction. And for beginning therapists, that's really important. Otherwise, they can, as I said, meander on, get lost, and, you know, the therapy could go on forever. Yeah, and that's, that's there's, a, there's an ethical point of view there as well, isn't there? That, you know, as therapists, we aim to make ourselves, I guess, redundant. So we, <laughs> don't, we don't want to um, keep, keep <laughs> clients in therapy for longer than they need to be. No, I mean, that's that very true. And Eric Byrne had a very strong view on this. He believed contracts should be adult to adult. In other words, from not from some historical child place being made, i.e. adapted or rebelled, or not from some parent, like you should be doing this, but the contract should be made in the here and now from an adult place. Yes. And that's very important, because the old psychoanalysts, they used to make contracts. Well, if you call them contracts, but I'm more like we'll start here and we'll end perhaps where we where we get to. But anyway, it was made from a parent position. It yes. made from an I'm okay, you're not okay position, I think, very much with the very old psychoanalytical places where the psychoanalyst was the expert. Yeah, so you make an important part there about power in the, in the counselling and the therapeutic relationship, about, mm. about the contract being um, bilateral. And, and allowing our clients autonomy to make decisions about what goes, certainly in terms of the, the treatment contract, what mm. what they want. Well, it sounds a, a really good book. It sounds it sounds like one that students should be reading, especially in our new ethical world that we're moving into. So, contracts in counselling by Charlotte Stills. We'll we will put a um, screen grab at the end of this video, so that people can have a look, and also in the description below. We'll put a link so if people want to buy it or examine the book, um, they, can, they can click onto it. And, and of course, in, in the modern world of YouTube, Bob, we have to make a disclaimer saying that, you know, we're not being paid for this. We're not getting a free copy of this. This is just you sharing your love of, um, of books and, and not a commercial <laughs> venture. So no. as, as always, Bob, a, a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you very much. Thank you.